I'm not wearing any pants. What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we're going to be looking at the worst cards in the newest Battle of Legends. Here, Heroes Revenge? It seems like Konami's been doing these Battle of Legends every summer as like the summer deck building set. And uh, as always, it's full of weird anime cards and reprints and just a grab bag of stuff. And because of that, there's some crud in here. And everyone's going over like all the cool chase cards and stuff that you'd actually want to pull. So uh, let's do something different and look at the absolute worst crap that's making you regret ever buying a booster pack ever. And without further ado, let's get started. One of the introduced archetypes in this set are the Battle Wasps. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! To my understanding, there's some sort of random anime characters deck, but uh, that doesn't matter. They have bad cards, and the one we're going to be looking at today is Battle Wasp Dart the Hunter. Whether the deck is particularly good or not is really irrelevant. This card stinks. This wind level 1 insect monster has the following effect. When your battle wasp monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle that was originally owned by your opponent, you can discard this card from your hand to inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of the monster killed. Nice, it's a neg 1 hand trap for some burn damage. However, uh, most of the time you're just going to be losing card advantage to use this effect when really, honestly, you would have rather this do something anything different than this. It's also got a field effect. You can target another insect monster you control, that monster becomes a tuner. However, for the rest of the turn, you can only special summon insect monsters from your extra deck, which, okay, that's not the world's biggest deal. They have their own synchro monsters for this deck, so, okay, it's locking you into the archetype mostly. However, honestly, uh, this thing's a level one. You probably would have rather this thing just be a tuner as opposed to making something else a tuner. And you could just say, this could only make insect monsters. That would have been better, but okay. And you have to normal summon it. It doesn't, or special summon it by other means. It doesn't have any way of inherently getting in the board. It's just, it's pretty lackluster. Exactly the kind of card you'd, you'd see in an archetype that was destined to never do very much in the game. As if we needed more heroes, number nine is Vision Hero Multiply Guy. Multiply Guy. With a name like that, you'd think, oh, what does it do? Special summon itself to the field if you control a hero? <clears throat> Perhaps uh, when it summoned, it summons another guy from the deck. You know, it multiplies. No. <clears throat> if you take battle or effect damage while this card's in your graveyard, you can place this card face up in your spell or trap zone as a continuous spell. Uh, okay, okay. If this thing is in your spell or trap zone as a continuous spell, you can, you can tribute a guy you have to special summon this thing. And if this thing was special summoned like that, you can target a dude and make it get uh, 800 attack. But why though? Honestly, I don't know how the deck works, so maybe there's some really, really wonky use for the card. However, uh, whatever that use is, a lot needs to go right for it to actually matter. I, I'm not really positive what, what this is trying to, trying to do. Oh man, this set's got some filler in it. And if the bad hero support wasn't enough for one slot on the list, it got two. Elemental hero Neos Knight. Another Neos fusion. Hey, This level 7 light warrior fusion monster with 2500 attack and what, a thousand? A thousand defense has the following ability. It must be made with elemental heroes and a warrior monster. It must be fusion summoned, so I, that means you can't cheese it I guess. It gains half the, uh, half the original attack of the warrior monster used to make this thing, okay? and it can make a second attack during the battle phase. Oh, okay. Your opponent takes no battle damage for attacks involving this card. Uh, what's the point of giving a card an inherent attack boost and two attacks during a battle phase and yet it, it can't do any battle damage? whoop de freaking do Thanks, I'm sure all the uh, Elemental Heroes players are really, really stoked about their guy that is not even as good as Black Luster Soldier, a card that came out like 15 years ago. <laughs> I think its best use would be like super poly on your opponent's like Isolde or something really cheesy. I guess it'll clear a board. It really doesn't need that stupid battle condition. If it, if, if it could do battle damage, it'd be okay. It'd be an okay option for like maybe finishing a game. Otherwise, it's just 
wasting space in your extra deck. Like, Elemental Hero Neos has way better fusions than this. Oh, it's... These aren't even fun bad, they're just bad and boring bad. Ooh, Pendulum Support. All Eyes Phantom Dragon. A level 10 Light Dragon Pendulum Monster. Neato, with 3k attack and 2500 defense. Blue Eyes stats. Level 10. Weird. Scale 0. Uh, that's... That's that's okay. What does this thing do? Well, it's a pendulum effect, is. During the damage step, if your dragon pendulum monster attacked an opponent's monster, you can activate this effect and that monster can attack again. However, it's the only thing you can attack with this turn, okay? But uh, with that 3k body, this thing better be a monster, not a spell. So let's let's get her on board and see what she does. Cannot be normal summon or set, must be special summoned by, wait, what? From your hand or face up extra deck by tributing all monsters you control, minimum two, including a dragon pendulum monster. Wait, you can't pendulum summon this? Okay, uh, um, but it's a pendulum monster. Uh, uh. <laughs> You can only special summon it once per turn this way. Even if it's in the extra deck? Not only can you, like, not pendulum summon this pendulum monster for some odd reason, but in order to special summon it by its own inherent ability, you need to, like, tribute all your guys. But why do? Also, like, one of them has to be a specific thing. That's a lot of hoopla to go through just to get this on board. Please. Please do something good. Once per turn during damage count against an opponent's monster, it can double its attack till the end of the turn. Up to 6k. Okay. Once per turn when your opponent activates a spell or trap, or effect, you can send a spell or trap you control to the graveyard to negate that activation. That's okay. That's okay. Why you wouldn't just summon Vortex Dragon is beyond me. Oh, this is so dumb. I guess the best thing you can hope for is you sack all your dudes from last turn and then pendulum summon them all back. Because it does make sure to say that it's a tribute. This is a very, very, very lackluster support card. Mostly because it doesn't power creep anything and most of the existing cards are better than it, which really begs the question of why. At least it's a big beat stick. That's a thing. Here we go. Number six is Stardust Mirage. Stardust Mirage is a normal trap card that reads, if you control a level eight or higher dragon type synchro monster, special summon as many monsters from your graveyard that were destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect this turn. You can only use one of these things per turn. How is this even supposed to work? It shows like Stardust Dragon on the card artwork. However, if you have Stardust Dragon on board, more than likely your monsters will not be killed by card effect. Cause that's what Stardust Dragon does. And if you used Stardust Dragon's ability, it will no longer be on the board for you to get this stuff back if for some reason your opponent had like Regeki and Dark Hole. So this is dead anyway. And if you didn't use Stardust Dragon's ability, it just got killed. This card literally can't function with the card it depicts in the artwork. And I don't know, but like most level eight or higher dragon synchro monsters have like negate abilities anyway. So most often than not, I feel like this card is probably just be super awkward to resolve. And I guess there's always the battle thing. But you're gonna tell me that you had a level eight or higher synchro monster on your board and yet your opponent decided to, I don't know, crash into literally everything else and that level eight synchro monster d had no ability to stop your opponent from doing that. What did you possibly summon? A Trish and let it sit there? I really am having, I'm really struggling to try to come up with a game state where this would actually be like a great play and not just a, well, I can finally activate it. It's not good, but I can finally do it. We have Monster Reborn in this game. That doesn't care when your stuff was killed. You can even get your opponent's stuff. Now we got Call of Haunted. We got cards that don't care when stuff dies. I'm assuming this is an anime card. It, it feels like an anime card. Like one of those, aha, gotcha moments. Yup. Here we go. Top five. <laughs> it goes downhill. Five-headed dragon. Eh. <laughs> See what I did there? I mean, Five-Headed Dragon's pretty bad, so I don't think I put it so high on the list for no reason. Low on the list? It's right in the middle, so I guess it doesn't much matter. But yeah, the card stinks. It's incredibly disrespectful. It's a 5k beater made of five dragon monsters with a battle immunity to everything except lights and divine. However, I think that divine thing's a bit of an accident, because when this card was originally printed, 
I don't think we had any playable divine monsters, so it was really only could be killed by a light monster. But they made sure not to errata the card text to say, can only be destroyed in battle by a light monster, which would save them tons of space on the card, as opposed to rattling off every single like attribute other than light. But I guess they wanted to kind of grandfather in the, the divine so you can punch this thing with Obelisk the Tormentor and attack boost, I guess. Okay, that'd be kind of epic. Now fuck like a chicken! What? A chicken! No! But why are we harping on this big dumb 5k beater? Uh, because it's a big dumb 5k beater. However, we will, we will, we will be fair. It's only in the set so that we can get a hold of the new artwork. Uh, I don't think Konami's under any impression that anyone would play this or be using this for anything. Uh, guard dragons with that Tekton dragon's mirror. Feels, feels real strong. The new artwork's cool, but because it's in a TCG legal playable set, and it is a TCG legal playable card, it does not mean it's not a bad card, just because it's a collector's card. Perfect. 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 Oh boy, is number four a wall of text. Number 93, Utopia Kaiser. We are still getting number monsters. I think we got like the balance of them in this set, but uh, yeah, we're still getting number monsters somehow. This is a rank 12, though it doesn't really matter what its rank is, with 2,500 attack and 2,000 defense, which is absurdly low <laughs> for a level 12. It's made of two number XC monsters with the same rank that both have material. All right. Wow, that's a lot of uh, advantage to lose. And you needed to make a link monster in there, probably. Good luck with good luck summoning this. Once per turn, you can special summon rank 9 or lower monsters from your extra deck with 3,000 attack or lower up to the number of material attached to this card with different names. But their effects are negated. Then you need to detach a material from this card, and if this effect wasn't negated, for the rest of the turn you cannot special summon. And any battle damage your opponent takes is, is, is half. This is all like one long sentence. I guess the idea is that you're detaching one so you can't keep summoning the same amount of dudes every turn unless you're forcing material back onto this thing. And this thing can't be killed by battle or card effects while you control another number monster. Okay, despite being like only two effects, <laughs> it is a wall of text and it's so bad. If this was Master Rule 3, this thing would be the most broke dope, like, wombo combo of a play ever, pushing for an OTK, summoning, like, all these humongous beaters from your deck. You know, hell, you can get, like, stupid things, like, uh, Crazy Box. I think that's a number monster, right? And his effects are negated, so he can totally attack, so just a 3k beater. Like, there's cool things you can grab with this and just punch for a huge amount of damage despite the fact that your opponent's taking half damage because all the monsters you summoned are like 3k attack power, so they're just still really big. And if you manage to wombo combo this far, you've probably started dealing with your opponent's board along the way too, so, you know, Master Rule 3, this would have been great. Master Rule 4, however, how are you... What are you playing? Dangers? Like, the amount of wombo that your combo needs to wombo in order to make, like... A link monster with like three down arrows maybe? Or perhaps a link monster, diagonals, and then maybe like a proxy over here, and then maybe like something else, and then like the two number monsters with shit under them. Jeez. Jeez Louise. You're gonna summon all these dudes somehow miraculously, and then you're gonna end your turn, and then you're gonna fail to draw a card <laughs> because you decked yourself out making all this crap. However, it would be pretty epic to get this thing off, but this thing will never resolve. This is so bad. It's very specific how it's made. It's a very specific board state where it can even really resolve its effect. Because if it's just the only thing sitting in the extra deck, you really, you can't summon anything with its effect. So you gotta have links and stuff to it. It'll never work. It will never work. I say that, but some, some idiot's gonna make this thing work and it's gonna be like a big problem. Ooh, number three is another reprint. A reprint we... We really, really did not need. Symbol of friendship! <laughs> Why? To activate this card, you must draw it for your normal draw phase, and then leave it revealed. While your opponent controls three monsters or more, and you control nothing. No cards, not just no monsters, no cards. So you have an empty board, and your opponent's got a humongo board. You top deck this stupid thing. And then during your main phase, if it's the main phase of the turn that you drew and revealed this thing, you can play it. And then once it resolves, you can like just add any card from your deck to your hand. 
any card from your deck. That's, that's why the activation condition is so absurdly specific, because it lets you search literally every card in the game. That's pretty good. However, again, it'll, it'll never ever resolve. You'll never be in a scenario where you could reliably ever do this, because for one, you need to, you need to sack it. You, know, like you need to hard draw it, so you can't even be sure when you're going to do it anyway. And two, the scenario in which you're doing this is like super, super specific, and you're in a very losing position. You control no cards, your opponent has three or more monsters. Three or more monsters. That doesn't say anything about the back row they have. And if they got three bad, if they got three monsters on board, you know they got some back row too. Like, they have a full board, and you're trying to sack them with this thing. And none of those three monsters are stopping like this effect from resolving. Who are the cards you search? That card better be good, and their board better be crap. Search sphere mode. <laughs> that would be like the perfect target because I got three monsters. <laughs> I like the smiley face. It's so happy. That's the kind of shit eating grin I'd have on my face too if I actually sacked this card and was able to resolve it. It's totally trying to recreate the anime scene from like episode one where Yugi top decks the last piece of Exodia against the three blue eyes white dragons. This is literally the heart of the cards. This is ridiculous. Number two is the Water of Life. I feel sorry for Water of Life. This would have been a pretty solid card, like, you know, during like the GX era. If you control no monsters, target a monster in your graveyard, special summon it in attack position. And for the rest of the turn, you can't activate monster effects except the thing you summoned with this card. And you can only play one per turn. If we didn't have Monster Reborn in the game as a legal card, as well as that thing that summons dudes to the link zone, what is that called? And Call the Haunted, and a million other better options. This might be okay. It's once per turn, so, you know, having multiples is gonna brick in a little bit. And you can't activate any other monster effects except what you're summoning. However, if you're just doing a bunch of inherent summons, maybe it doesn't matter. It's useless. That's why it's so high. It, it's useless. There's no reason to run it. We, we have better options. We have a 100% legal better option in Monster Reborn. The artwork's kind of cool, I guess. Ooh, we got honorable mentions, or I guess it'd be a dishonorable mention, and that's Sonic Stun. More like Stunning Sonic. <laughs> gotta, gotta go fast. Ironically, you can't because this card is slow. It's a trap card. When your opponent declares attack, negate the attack, and then special summon one TG monster or a tuner level four monster or lower from your hand or deck. Like I said, it's a dishonorable mention on a list of bad cards. So it's not necessarily as bad as the rest of these. You probably would never play it, but in a bubble, it's it's okay. You're, you're negating an attack and you're it's replacing itself with a dude. Maybe it's a dude you need. Your opponent's probably just gonna run over the guy you summon if you have no other way of stopping the rest of their attacks. It didn't deal with anything on your opponent's board and the best scenario is it's used against like their last attack. It's slow, it's just okay. Gotta go fast. Before we get to number one, today's sponsor, as always, is MetaMats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, use the code TROLLEDMETA and you'll get 10% off your purchase. Helps the channel, helps MetaMats, helps the economy. So, uh, go do that. They're cool mats. And number one is Gold Moon Coin. Gold Moon Coin's got the privilege of not only being like the worst card in this set, but it might be one of the worst cards ever printed. It's so bad. What does it do? Add two cards from your hand to your opponent's hand. There you go, worst card in the game. Doesn't matter what the rest of it does. That's so terrible. Then draw two cards. You can only use this thing once per turn. They even had the balls to make it a hard once per turn. I guess if they didn't, you might be able to get away with this in like an Exodia deck because giving your opponent two cards that are, you know, literally useless to them is probably a small price to pay to draw two cards to try to get to your win condition. Okay, the, the hard once per turn makes some sense, I suppose. Because the only time you'd ever use this card is, is in like the cheesiest, stupidest deck ever. Because otherwise, giving your opponent two cards is really, really dumb. I guess, again, if they are two cards they simply cannot use because they're running a different deck than you, you're still losing, you're still going minus three for t for two cards. It's still a neg one. Nothing like a neg one draw card. Ugh. I know one of you jerks is gonna be like, give your opponent relay soul. I hate when people say that for the give your opponent cards cards. There's no, obli they have no obligation to play it. They're just gonna keep it in their hand. If this card's booty. Also, why isn't it gold coin moon? The moon's clearly a coin. 
It's a gold coin moon, not a gold moon coin. If it was a gold moon coin, it'd be a coin with a moon on it. This bad artwork on Wajo Pro looks like it's like a head or something. This card's, this card's really dumb. But anyways, that was the worst cards in Battles of Legend. These are the cards that uh, if you pulled them, you're gonna want to never ever buy a pack again. Probably awesome reprint is like a really bad original card. <laughs> Those fortune things just, just managed to miss this. Let me guys know in the comments below what you guys think. Remember guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I will see you guys next time. Huh, <laughs> clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yugi tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba, let's go get ice cream. I'd settle for a real bed to sleep in, Seto.